Well, coming up, I will be touching on the most important win for every Big 12 team this season. But first, let's talk about some contract news involving the Big 12 Conference. Pete Mundo, Heartland College Sports Weekly, part of heartlandcollegesports.com. Check us out, your independent Big 12 digital media outlet. So here's the deal for the Big 12 right now. They are trying to find a buyer for their Big 12 championship game uh, for the years 2019, 2021, and 2023. That's what they need. That's what they're looking for. Uh, they're looking for 20 million bucks a pop. That's what the conference wants to get. Fox already turned them down. This is according to Sports uh, Business Daily. So Sports Business Daily reported this first. Uh, John Orrin with those guys does a really good job. Now, what's interesting is that Fox already said no thanks. Am I shocked? Maybe not necessarily because the way Fox looks at it, they got the Big Ten championship game in prime time on Saturday night. Are they going to pay 20 mil for the 11 a.m. slot like the Big 12? Uh, maybe they don't think it's worth it. So now the Big 12 is discussing this with ESPN. There is apparently, according to Sports Business Daily, there is apparently a third network that's involved or is interested in picking up this game for, um, you know, I don't know if they're interested in $20 million, but there is a third network interested. But the Big 12 contract says that they can't negotiate with that third network until ESPN and Fox have both passed. So ESPN might come back and they might say, hey, uh, we will pay, what a number, $15 million. The Big 12 says, no, we're not taking 15 We want 12 or we want 20 excuse me. But if both sides dig in, then it goes to arbitration. So ESPN's kind of got the Big 12 by the short hairs here because the ESPN would have to pass for the Big 12 to then negotiate with that third, uh, third network, whoever that might be. You know, as I think about it, um, you know, would NBC be interested in that? I don't know. I mean, they don't have a game that weekend because they carry Notre Dame and, you know, Notre Dame is such a bunch of wimps. They don't play in a conference championship game. I say that tongue in cheek, but seriously, I mean, Notre Dame, can you get in a, ch in a championship game in a conference, please? Would it kill you? I just, I can't stand the Irish playing by their own stinking rules. Um, who else could it be? You know, I mean, it's not ABC or Fox, obviously. Uh, CBS, I, they got the SEC. I don't know if they'd want it. Um, NBC, would you go down the route of something digital? I doubt it. I don't think the industry is there yet to put a major conference championship game on a digital network. Something like, you know, I'm just like a Twitter live like the NFL did for a couple of games or a Facebook live or, you know, I don't know if Amazon Prime or something like that. I doubt they would do it. But you know, something to keep in mind because when we move forward here, I'm telling you, and, and when these contracts come up in five, six years, there'll be bidders in that thing that you never thought of. It's not just going to be the usual NBC, ABC, CBS, uh, Fox. There'll be some new faces in there. So, all right, let's get to the most important wins for every Big 12 team this past season. I put together a list on heartlandcollegesports.com and you can check it out there. I'll just go alphabetical order. For the Baylor Bears, it was a 35-24 win against Texas Tech. If you think about this game, last game of the season, a tough loss to TCU the week before, this Baylor team picked up the win over Tech. The winner of that game was bowl eligible. And for Baylor, then they go on and they beat Vanderbilt in that, uh, in that bowl game. And that has changed the whole feel of this program, to be bowl eligible after winning one game to then beat an SEC team. I know it's not Alabama, but you beat an SEC team of your caliber. I, you know, it almost got Matt Rule the, the stinking Jets job. But guess what? It was a great win. That was the defining win for the Baylor team this season. Iowa State 48-42 over Oklahoma State. Cyclones were 1-3. and three. All of a sudden, it looked like that momentum from 2017 was going to be out the window. Enter Brock Purdy. Rest is history, and, you know, Iowa State now is its quarterback for at least the next two years, maybe three. Kansas, 27-26 win over TCU for their most important win. Why? It was their only Big 12 win. And, you know, in fairness, not to make fun of Kansas too much, but it does give the guys that are on this team uh, the confidence to know that they can win a Big 12 game. I think Les Miles will give him even more confidence. The guy's got a national championship ring. But, hey, you get one win. You feel good about it. You're like, hey, uh, we can do this. K-State, 21-6 win over Texas Tech. 
Uh, and the reason I picked that game for the Wildcats is it turned out to be Bill Snyder's final home game in front of the Manhattan faithful. I, I wish that Snyder wasn't so stubborn. I wish he announced with a month left this was it for him, and then they could have given him the proper send-off in this game against the Red Raiders. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but that's just how Bill Snyder does business. We shouldn't be shocked by it, and um, we move on. But it was the final home game for Bill Snyder, so obviously their most important win of the season in what was an otherwise forgettable season. Oklahoma, 59-56 against West Virginia. You know, put OU in the uh, Big 12 championship game, which led to the college football playoff berth. It's easy to say one of the Texas games, right? It's so cliche. But that game also against West Virginia did a couple of things. First off, it continued Kyler Murray's comeback into the Heisman race. And the Sooners made a couple of big defensive plays in that game, which helped their standing in the eye of the college football playoff committee. So, that was – it was more than just a win. It was a big deal down the home stretch. Oklahoma State, 38-35 win against Texas for their most important victory. Homecoming weekend, Barry Sanders, throwback unis, Texas rolling number six in the country. And then, boom, you know, Mike Gundy does the old uh, – uh, what did he do at the end of that game as Tom Herman was yelling at the officials and getting on the field and – you know, I like Tom Herman, but he was being kind of a bozo at the end of that game. Are you entertained? That's what it was. Are you entertained? Mike Gundy gave us one of those. Um, are you not entertained? That's right. Legendary stuff, Mike Gundy. Go on down, TCU, 16-9 win against Baylor. You know, they needed to win two games to be bowl eligible. It started with that game. TCU was a mess injury-wise. They beat their biggest rival. They win the term of battle. And it ended the season with three straight wins, or it kickstarted that three game winning streak to end the season. Texas, I said the 28 20 win against Georgia. The reason why is because even Charlie Strong beat Oklahoma. Winning against the SEC runner ups, who a lot of people thought should be in the college football playoff, was enormous for this team and for this program. So that's why I'm giving the Georgia win as the most important for Texas this year, not the Oklahoma win. For Texas Tech, it was a 41-17 win over Oklahoma State. It was Alan Bowman's introduction to the Big 12, an outstanding performance, get the Raid Raiders some momentum in conference play. Uh, that was a great game. Now, the rails, uh, you know, the whole cart fell off the rails, so to speak, but um, that was a great – that gave you a lot of optimism if you were an Oklahoma or a Texas Tech fan. And West Virginia, 42-40 win over Texas. I'm biased. I was there. That was the best game in the Big 12 all season. Unbelievable. I wrote about it on heartlandcollegesports.com, but that was a defining game in college football this year. The chess match at the end, the hookup Greer to Jennings in regulation, unbelievable stuff. Pete Mundo, Heartland College Sports Weekly, part of heartlandcollegesports.com. You guys are awesome. Thank you for checking us out. Radio, podcast, YouTube, Facebook, whatever it might be. We appreciate you. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week, same time, same place, on Heartland College Sports Weekly.